Hello everyone. In the previous video, I'll link that over here, we had ChatGPT create a program for this microcontroller to make this LED blink. What we did is essentially output a voltage onto one of these microcontroller pins. And this is one of the three things that microcontrollers do is we output to pins, we can sense input from a pin, whether a high or low signal is coming in, or we can actually sense a, an analog voltage with the ADC. The outputting of a voltage to a pin is actually pretty powerful because most of the things that microcontrollers do for communication is output to pins ones and zeros. So what you're essentially doing with the LED and blinking the LED is doing essentially that. The only difference is with communication protocols is when you're outputting to a pin, it's usually on a timed basis and it's a combination of ones and zeros. That's it. In this video, I wanna see if ChatGPT can do something that may seem quite easy to us, but it's probably gonna be pretty difficult for ChatGPT, and that is fading in an LED. Um, it's gonna get brighter and dimmer and brighter, but ChatGPT has to assume certain things, and that is how our human eyes work. We can see 30 frames per second, but we want to try to maybe assume that ChatGPT knows this. So I wanna try doing the prompting in the beginning where I'm not informing uh, ChatGPT about the human eye and, and how it works to see if it will already know how to do that. And fading in an LED is very similar to doing a lot of other projects with the microcontroller and that is producing a digital voltage output on a pin of various voltages. So like if we wanted to dim this LED halfway, we would maybe provide 2.5 volts instead of 5 volts or, or 1.5 volts instead of 3 volts. Let's see if ChatGPT can do this. Another use for providing a voltage or a uh, what is called a PWM or a up and down signal between a particular period is providing the output for a hobby servo where you're, you're producing a signal out on a particular pin that provides an angle for the servo horn to rotate. I want to address a particular subject that I see in the comments a lot and I keep harping on the Arduino. The Arduino, I have nothing, I have no problem with the Arduino, but the Arduino has been out there for such a long time. And a lot of the young makers out there may not realize that you could really just start with the simple microcontroller and not have to start with something like this that could pigeonhole you into not really understanding microcontrollers in a fundamental way. So if you're doing a one-off project, an Arduino is fine. You can you know, buy the Arduino, put a few shields on it. It might be a little bit bulky, but you've got that project to work and it's a, a good prototype. But if you're wanting to get into the occupation of creating projects for microcontrollers, I think the best way to start is from the bare chip. And it's not harder than working with the Arduino. It's actually just as easy. So why not? I'm gonna use the GPT that I created for this purpose. You can find a link in the description where you can find this GPT. So let's go ahead and pose the question to ChatGPT and see what happens. I'm going to prompt the GPT as simply as I can, only mentioning that the LED will be fading in and out and it is connected to pin PA1, since that's the pin we used from the last project. So let's take a look at the response. Interesting, it's going straight to the PWM feature of the microcontroller. It's nice that GPT gives us a little bit of a description of the program code. You can see that the GPIO is set up for pin 1 and GPIO A, and it looks like it's setting up an alternate function for that pin for, I guess, as, as a timer, but I don't think that pin has a timer as an alternate function. Let's confirm this at newbiehack.com. When you look at the pin PA1, which is pin number 15, you can see that there is no timer associated with that pin, but you can see where the timers are located in other pins. So we can already see issues with this program. I don't see a timer number being used, so I'm not sure if it specified its timer, but it looks like it's just boilerplate code. Okay, it looks like here it's actually stating that it's just a template, so we don't really want to 
use this template. We want ChatGPT to give us an actual program and not a template, so let's try again. On second thought, I think this would be a good opportunity to show what would happen if you just blindly copied and pasted code into the IDE. So let's go ahead and start the IDE and let's see what this code does. As always, I'll start a new project and assign the correct microcontroller to the project. Name the project. Open the main.c file. And we want to confirm that we're opening the C or C++ perspective. And we don't need any of this code. We're just going to go ahead and delete all of it and then paste in the code from ChatGPT. Before we move on, I just want to ease the pain about what's going on on the screen. I know it looks like there's a lot going on, but it's really pretty simple. This area right here is where the program resides. And this area right here is where the IDE is going to send you some messages like errors or what's going on with the microcontroller programmer, if there's any issues in communication or anything like that. Okay, let's continue on. And press the play button to initiate the program transfer onto the microcontroller and see what happens. And you can see that there are so many errors here that you wouldn't even want to proceed. So, so let's go ahead and reprompt ChatGPT and see if we can get something better out of it. In the new prompt, I wanted to ask for a version in HAL, a version that uses the hardware abstraction layer and can work with most chips. But I can see that it's using Timer 2, and I don't believe this particular microcontroller has a Timer 2. I think it has Timer 1, Timer 3, and other timers, but I don't think Timer 2 exists. And of course, after copying the code and pasting it in, I get a bunch of errors. So this is a good moment to talk about our sponsor. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without the sales of my book and the kits on newbiehack.com. The book will prepare you for entry into the world of programming and basic circuit building for ARM microcontrollers. The kits on the website provide the components you'll need for the successful building and programming of ARM microcontroller projects. The implementation of ARM microcontrollers is vast from robotics to home appliances to complex aerospace systems. Starting from the bare chip will accelerate your way to making efficient products or working for well-known companies that use these microcontrollers in their products. Let's try a new prompt, but this time I want to go register level. Register level just means with microcontrollers accessing the various controls. It's like a big switchboard of switches that you turn on and off. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to create a program that is at the register level and see what happens. It looks like it still wants to create the program using a PWM. So I know this isn't going to work because I'm not using a pin that provides an output for a timer. So let's go ahead and plug it in anyway and see what kind of errors we get. It looks like ChatGPT is at least using a timer that exists. But there's a lot of things I'm actually catching while editing this video. And I'm noticing that because I'm using pin PA1, somewhere in ChatGPT's training, it thinks that PA1 has a timer 2 associated with it. So I'm thinking that's where it's getting confused. You can see where it tries to control the alternate function. It shows timer 2 for that. The include file was also incorrect, so I changed that. After programming the microcontroller and running that program, absolutely nothing happens. So let's go back to ChatGPT and let's go for a more simple approach. This time, I don't explicitly say I don't want to use PWM, but I state that I just want the LED to blink on and off really fast. So it appears that, that the LED is fading in and out. In ChatGPT's response, it mentions that this method won't provide a smooth fade as PWM, but the illusion, I think, is going to be fine. Let's go ahead and try this version, and in my next video, I'll probably show the PWM version using a different pin, just to see what the difference is. I mean, we did really kind of trip it up by not using the correct pin, so it was kind of uh, unfair to use this pin and it recommending the use of PWM. But in all fairness, it really should have known that pin PA1 wasn't a timer pin. All right, so let's copy the code and insert it into the IDE. 
Notice that the code has so many fewer lines. OK, so let's go ahead and run this program. Plug in the ST link and press the Run button. OK, the program was compiled without errors and was successfully able to be transferred. It's difficult to see what's going on here on camera, but what the LED is doing is just fast blinking with no variation in the blink frequency or duration. Now I'm going to tell ChatGPT what happened and include some of the assumptions that I talked about in the beginning of the video. It looks like it's understanding what I'm asking, and ChatGPT is calculating what the 30 frames per second would mean in terms of milliseconds. It also looks like the variables are being exposed, so we can adjust these variables if it doesn't work. I'm not showing the complete response from ChatGPT, but every response that ChatGPT gives is very helpful. So if you read through the entire response, you will get very detailed information and will help you with writing the code. It may not get the code right the first time or may not get the code right at all, but it will at least guide you in the right direction. So let's see if this one works. I'm going to copy the code and put it into the main.c and I'll press the play button and see what we get. No errors and downloaded the program to the marketing controller successfully. Well, we've got something outputting and it looks like the duration of the light is getting longer each time. ChatGPT is definitely on the right track. It just doesn't have the timing right. And that could be because it doesn't really know what speed our marketing controller is set at. It exposed these variables for us. So let's just go ahead and modify these variables and see if we can get it to work. You know, one thing I want to try is what would this look like if I sped up the video really fast? This is about 800% speed and it looks like it's, you know, it's getting close. It looks like it needs to have an order of magnitude faster to get that fading illusion. I'm giving ChatGPT one last opportunity. I'm going to say what actually happened and see if it can produce a program that that produces a faster output. In this go round, I don't think ChatGPT understood my explanation of what was happening because it increases the frame duration and it also states that the frame rate was okay but the duty cycle needed to change and it's actually the other way around. So let's go ahead and copy and paste the code and run it and see what happens. And just as I suspected, it's a longer duration between blinks. Since ChatGPT exposed the variables for us, I think we're going to have to help out ChatGPT and see if we can make this program work. I'm sure with more iterations of requests and informing ChatGPT what went wrong, it would eventually get it right. But in most cases, at least in the state of the art of ChatGPT currently, this is going to be the faster way. As long as you read all of the information it gives you, you should have enough guidance to get you where you need to go. So let's go ahead and try this out and see what happens. By reducing the frame duration and reducing the step, taking out two zeros on both of those variables, we're able to get a really good illusion of the LED fading. It doesn't show very well on the camera, but it's as good as any LED fading that I've seen. More refinements to these variables and just playing with them to see what happens is a good way to understand how the program works and learn some of the code that it gave us. You can also read quite a bit of the information ChatGPT put out, and it's actually a good way to learn how to program microcontrollers. Of course, we want to thank ChatGPT for providing these variables for us and obviously providing the program because because in the end we want to look favorably under the robot overlords you never know they could be listening all this information that we're giving them could someday be our downfall but if we're nice maybe we'll survive thank you so much for watching